Brand new trading card games, mega hit expansions and a long awaited big box announcement. Hello, I'm Matthew and welcome to your board game news. Fantasy Flight have announced a brand new Star Wars trading card game with Star Wars Unlimited. There's villains, ships and settings from all facets of the legendary Star Wars franchise we're told, including movies, TV series, comics, video games and everything in between. And the game will launch globally next year. In game terms, they describe a fast-paced, dynamic game that is both easy to learn and strategically deep, and Polygon released an article that has more information than the press release, which mentions that Unlimited is designed for two-player, but also multiplayer games. Jim Cartwright, Product Strategy Director for Fancy Flight Games, stated that it has straightforward mechanics and they're the driving force behind the design. It's clean and concise with no gimmicks, a card game in its purest form. The press release goes on to say that organised play is part of the game's model, as is the strong leaning towards the collectible card game world, with alternate cards with special treatments and variants and visual designs. So it looks also like a collectible Star Wars game is back, but with Key Forge and Star Wars Destiny rapidly coming and going from Fantasy Flight's roster, only time will tell if Star Wars Unlimited will be a game to stick around. In some brief Watch It Played news, hello! Our next party stream marathon is coming up fast and is taking place over the weekend of June 10th and the 11th. The event will be streaming on our Twitch channel linked below and we'll be playing a host of party feeling games live from Rodney's house. We're all going to Canada to do this, so we'd love for you to join us for that. Frix Games have announced the latest expansion for Terraforming Mars with Prelude 2. This, it seems, will be similar in size and scope to the original Prelude expansion, which were designed to jumpstart games at Terraforming Mars, getting the game's action off in a quicker pace. This sixth expansion for Terraforming Mars, which people are really hoping will fit into the big box they just bought, focuses on cross-expansion effects, Prelude cards and ongoing effects and actions, and more project cards for your tableau, as well as five new corporations. This expansion is going to Kickstarter soon and apparently there was an email going around that said their Kickstarter will have more than just this expansion on offer with a few other new things for the game such as promos and secrets but we won't have long to wait for all to be revealed. Another massive game getting an expansion is Ark Nova with the announcement of Marine Worlds, which introduces a bunch of new stuff into competitive conservation efforts and general zoo life, such as sea animals that each have to be played in new special enclosures that must be built adjacent to water. Roughly half the sea animals are reef dwellers and whenever you add a reef dweller to your zoo, you trigger the ability of all reef dwellers in your zoo. To deal with the dilution, which I think is a pun, of the deck naturally caused by adding more cards, all sea creatures feature a wave icon. Whenever this icon is revealed in the display, you discard the first card in the row and then replenish. There's a new fourth University of the Associations board and the massive addition that for each of the five action cards, four alternate versions with a little twist will be available and players draft action cards at the start of play, replacing two of their standard action cards with the new ones. There's new bonus tiles and final scoring cards, alternate wooden markers for the three tracks and cute animals to mark the conservation projects you support instead of using your regular player markers. Marine Worlds is already up for pre-order on Capstone Games' website where they also tell us that they expect to be shipping the expansion in October. <laughs> Some Portuguese restaurants are serving typical Portuguese food along with performances of Fado, the world-renowned traditional Portuguese music, in the next game, House of Fado, from Eagle Griffin Games and co-designed by Vitel Lacerda. House of Fado plays one to four players, and in the game, players will have to manage the restaurant, track customers, and contract and promote Fadistas, thus gaining prestige for their Fado house. Managers will have to move their staff members to different places to perform actions, and the game lends a little from the much bigger and heavy Lacerda game, The Gallerist, with the use of the KO action, though it's being pitched as a more straightforward, fast-playing, one-hour game. But still very challenging, as usual in Lacerda games, and is being released sometime next year. 
Thunderworks Games have announced Stone Spine Architects coming next year, a 1-5 to five player card drafting game from the same designer as their massively popular cartographers. Dungeon crafting, we are told, is an ancient minotaur art that you've studied for decades under the Master Hortugli. That's probably right. And now to demonstrate your skill, you as your final project must carve your own perilous labyrinth into the base of Stone Spine Mountain. Players will be drafting and playing cards to expand their dungeons one chamber at a time while attempting to follow a unique blueprint and a variety of scoring challenges. You'll be choosing between mapping a path through the underground passages, placing key elements in your rooms, or of course, searching for extra treasure. Gold can be used between rounds to customize your labyrinth with monsters, traps, treasures, and secret passages. And at the end of four years, the player with the most perilous dungeon will earn the title of Master Architect. And I like the sound of this one. And now let's check in with the latest releases available to play on Board Game Arena, who sponsored this segment. An alpha version of the High Noon expansion has been released for Bang! It's got an exclamation point, which introduces 15 new cards for more twists to the gameplay. And Applejack is a tile placement game in which you build a wonderful orchard and harvest apples to win. Players must wisely choose which tiles they want, combining each kind of apples into groups to earn sweet, sweet honey. We'll add links down in this video's description to find, learn and play each of these new releases on Board Game Arena. <laughs> Freaky Frogs from Outer Space is the new solo game from Friedman Fries and 2F Spiel coming later this year, where you finally have time for a little pinball and you want to see how long you can keep the ball running on your favourite old pinball machine this time. If everything runs perfectly, you may even start the nerve-wracking multi-ball or even gain an extra ball to play an additional round as you attempt to achieve a new high score. Freaky Frogs from Outer Space aims to recreate a real pinball machine experience as a new card game which includes both skill and luck, just like real life. It can kind of be unfair at times, we're told, but scores in the hundreds of thousands are possible if you try and try again. The next big box Ryan Lockett and Red Raven Games game has been announced with the 1-6 to six player Creature Caravan coming next year. A new threat apparently lurks in the land of Arzium. Ember zombies swarm from the volcanic lands to the south. Their charcoal bodies are the walking hives of evil fire fairies. Of course, the closest haven is a city of Eastry, where a powerful artifact protects the inhabitants. You must travel across the desert and the plains, over the mountains and through the red canyons, helping wandering creatures of every shape and size to the safety of the city. Players will be building a tableau of creatures while traveling through a magnificent and dangerous land, taking simultaneous turns, placing dice on their action cards, moving their caravan on the map and playing new creature cards. Dice placement. Okay, I'm officially excited. You'll be competing to trade goods and rare coins in a shared market, searching the mysterious white towers and of course, fighting those darn ember zombies as they encroach on the land. And the game ends when one of your travelers finally reaches the safety of Eastry. And that's the news. But for the games that are on our own personal radars this month at Watch It Play, continue here with us and we'll see you there. <sighs>